So, um, getting back to what we're going through on solving one-step equations, um, what I want to do is give you guys two, kind of two questions, or basically two things to look at to solve one-step equations. All right? um, now, I'd want you to write this on the sheet of paper so you guys have this, because if I walk around and you say, and it happened like three, three or four times last class period, students said, hey, Mr. Bloom, I don't know how to do this. And guess what I responded to them? The exact same questions that I'm going to write up here. Okay? So when you're solving these, there's going to be different problems with fractions, decimals, everything else. You're going to want to stay, say these to yourself to help you work through them. So you're going to want to write this down on a sheet of paper, not on somebody's arm or forehead. But the first question we want to uh, um, identify is what operation is being applied to the variable? All right, so obviously in a one-step equation, we're going to have an equation, and there's going to be you know, an equal sign, and there's going to be a variable. right? So what we're going to do is look at the variable Sierra and identify what operation is going to be applied to your variable. Now, the nice thing, ladies and gentlemen, is we have only four options to choose from. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Right? Yes, Daniel? Yeah? We only have five options to um, five options to choose from. I'm sorry, four options to choose from. However, we normally do not see that multiplication sign when we're solving equations, do we? Right? Nor do we really see the division sign. Right? So it's just important, guys, to rem remember that when you have a number next to a variable, that's kind of representing uh, multiplication. And if you have the fraction, if you have it written as a fraction, that's representing division. But when you see the addition and subtraction, it's pretty obvious um, that's what it's going to be written as. But however, sometimes we'll get, we'll get into this in two-step equations. Not always are you going to see an addition sign in front of that variable. So we'll talk about that um, later. So first thing, you identify what is happening to the variable. Step number two. What is happening to the variable? Option number two is now we need to So we identify what's happening. You could say, all right, my variable is being added by 5. My variable is being subtracted by 11. My variable is being multiplied by 1 third. My variable is being divided by 2. Identify what is happening to your variable. And then, now we need to identify, well, what is the inverse operation? So again, think about this. If I, you know, Inverse operations are operations that undo each other. So um, the inverse <coughs> operation, Jill, of addition would be? Subtraction and the inverse operation of subtraction would be addition. And therefore, Brett, the inverse operation of multiplication is division. And the inverse operation of division is going to be multiplication. Um, and actually, those are different, uh, different inverse properties. But basically, that's identifying what we're doing. We're either trying to find the multiplicative inverse or the additive inverse, which I'm not going to go into with this class. But basically, what you guys have been doing is applying the inverse operations. OK? Um, and just remember that adding and subtracting are um, additive inverses of each other, and multiplication and division are multiplicative inverses of each other. And then the other thing that's also important is make sure it says the both sides. In Algebra 1, we talked very extensively about, about the addition property of equality, subtraction property equality, division property equality, and multiplication property of equality. Whatever you do on one side, you have to make sure you do on the other side, right? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, if you come to me and I say, hey, 